you're gonna need shelter to get a safe, good night's sleep while you're out overlanding. Before you go out and spend a bunch of money, watch this video. We're gonna present to you five options and tell you about our experience with them, our personal opinion, and pros and cons. After watching this video, you should be able to decide for yourself which option suits you best. Now let's get started. Watch this before falling for all the overland hype, advertising, and terrible advice that's out there. This series of videos we're producing is to help you navigate through all the BS and snobbery about overlanding. We'll be adding new episodes often, so be sure to subscribe. And click the bell to be notified when we do upload one. We're gonna start with the most common type of camping shelters, tents. There are two basic types, ground and rooftop tents. Here's a list of common needs we compiled to help you decide what's right for you. We recommend that you pause the video and write them down in order of importance to you. Okay, you've got your list of what's most important to you at the top. Let's start with protection from crawling things like ants, snakes, spiders, stuff like that. That's an easy one. I give this one to the rooftop tents. I'll also add that it's less likely to drag sand into a rooftop tent than a ground tent. Put an R next to that line. Protection from bears, lions, wolverines. Wolverines? Well, since all of those are skilled climbers, if they want to eat you, they will, whether you're sleeping up top or down low. But I'm going to give the slight advantage to rooftop tents. I'm more concerned about a herd of cattle or sheep trampling our ground tent in the middle of the night than I am bears. Protection from high winds. This is where a mountaineering style dome ground tent reigns supreme. We oftentimes uh, camp out in dispersed areas in open grasslands or prairie and where there's nothing to buffet the wind. Sometimes we'll have sustained winds of 40, 50 miles an hour and we have no problem with our dome ground tent. But just like all rooftop tents aren't created equal, neither are ground tents. There are popular tents like our Oz tent and the Gazelle tent that don't fare all that well in high winds due to their flat, more upright sides. However, with a ground tent, you can hide it behind large boulders, a stand of trees, a vehicle. You can't really do that very well with a vehicle mounted rooftop tent. Now with one of those you know, clam shaped rooftop tents, if you park that where the wind will deflect off that sloped roof, um, you'll fare fairly well if you want to go that route. Until the wind changes direction halfway through the night. Quick setup or takedown. This is especially important when it's raining or snowing. Some of the very simply designed rooftop tents are extremely fast to set up. You just unlatch it, push it up, and it's there. A simple ground tent with some practice can be set up in less than a minute though. But I'm still gonna give this one to the rooftop tent. Can be set up on an uneven surface. If you're camping on a gentle slope, obviously it's a lot easier to level out a vehicle using rocks or traction boards than it is to level out a ground tent. Also, if the ground is made up of rocks about this size, like an old stream bed, this one is definitely goes to the rooftop tent. But we've never had too much trouble finding a suitable spot for our tent. No, you would just have to look a little bit harder, not much harder, but a little bit more. Well, except for that time up in Manitoba or Ontario when we were out on the lake and we ended up on a game trail. Oh yeah, yeah, never camp on an active game trail. Don't set your tent up right there. Low cost, price. Have you looked at the cost of a decent rooftop tent lately? They are in the thousands, a huge investment and a huge amount of your camping budget for let's say $2,000, which is about the middle of the road for a rooftop tent. You get okay quality and okay features. 
Now spend $2,000 on a ground tent and you have got yourself a bomb-proof shelter that will last a lifetime and have all the bells and whistles. This one goes to the ground tents. Easy to get in and out of. One rather large downside of a rooftop tent is going up and down that ladder. But crawling out of a low ground tent has its challenges too especially when you get a little older. Because of that, this one comes out about equal to me, but I still have to choose one. It would be very hard to get a dog up and down the ladder into a rooftop tent, so ground tent it is. Gas mileage. Yeah, obviously with that rooftop tent up there, uh, less aerodynamic, your vehicle is gonna drink more fuel. This one goes to ground tent. Can store bedding in it, making setup and takedown a lot faster. Ground tents, obviously no. Many rooftop tents you can, but not all. Some are made really thin to be more aerodynamic. There's barely enough room to keep a really thin foam mattress up there, let alone pillows and blankets and all the other frou-frou stuff. I just want to mention, in a ground tent, you can use a really thick mattress if you want to. We use one that's four inches thick. Yeah. This one goes to the rooftop tent though. Weight. Yeah, weight is your enemy, especially if it raises your vehicle's center of gravity. Our favorite nylon ground tent that we use all the time only weighs about 12 pounds, and that includes the stakes and the poles. A rooftop tent will weigh between 100 and 250 pounds. That's a lot of weight, especially up on top of your vehicle. This one definitely goes to the ground tent. Looks great in Instagram pics. Oh, you can't be a real overlander without a rooftop tent, right? Don't allow social media to make your decision for you. One fantastic thing about rooftop tents is there are so many slightly used ones for sale. Now, look at your list. This is ours. Do the top three or four priorities have mostly G's or R's in front of them? You likely just made up your mind which type tent to get, to get started with anyway. You can always change your mind after you get some experience. We use ground tents because they fill our needs the best. What are some other thoughts on ground tents versus rooftop tents. This is purely our opinion. There's something most people don't think about when it comes to rooftop tents. There's also the cost of a proper roof rack. If your vehicle doesn't come with one, that will hold all that extra weight, which most don't. An aftermarket roof rack can cost you at least $1,000. There's a misnomer about rooftop tents being a drier way of camping. First, I know of some cheaply made rooftop tents that leak like crazy. And if your ground tent is getting wet inside, you likely have a piece of crap. Live and learn, buy a better one. Maybe you have your ground tent set up in a depression where rainwater is gonna naturally pool. Or you have a ground cloth or tarp under your tent and it extends out past the size of the tent, what happens is the rainwater will come down off your tent onto that tarp and instead of soaking into the ground like it's supposed to, it goes back underneath your tent and then makes its way up through the bottom. Something else that may be a concern for some, if you want to uh, go somewhere, go off on a trail ride, go into town or whatever, you'll have to take that rooftop tent down to drive. Another thing, a rooftop tent can be very, very difficult to get on and off. So what most people do is they just leave them on all the time, even during their daily driving. Okay, so if they're shopping for a tent, what should they be looking for? We believe the main purpose of a tent is to keep the rain off you and the bugs away from you. A nylon ground tent with a full rain fly that extends all the way down to the ground on the sides will do a superior job of that. You'll also want to look at the seams and how well they're constructed. Eventually, seams leak. 
What you need to look for is referred to as a bathtub floor. That's where the panels on the ground come up the sides a little bit. So there's not a seam right there along the perimeter at the ground. Also, look for additional tie-down loops about halfway up the tent for when it's super windy. For rooftop tents, look for areas where water will likely pool, especially right down at the base. This is a leak just waiting to happen. Avoid tents that have these awnings extended above the windows or doors that can't be rolled up or tied back when the wind really picks up. That's just one more thing to catch the wind and go flapping around. One more thing about tents, then we'll move on. Take a close look at the zippers. That's the first thing that's gonna break or wear out. You want ones that are robust with big teeth and big pulls. Also, look how that little flap is that's sewn into the tent covers them. Work the zipper back and forth. Does that little flap get caught in the zipper easily? There's nothing more frustrating than getting back into the tent after taking a leak and the damned zipper jams. And it always happens when it's pouring down rain or the mosquitoes are super bad. Make sure that all the seams are factory sealed or welded. What this is, is there should be a ribbon that looks like plastic along the entire length of the seams. That seals all those little tiny holes that the stitching makes. This is very important. Next up is by far the simplest and cheapest option, sleeping in your vehicle. Simple as Mary just said, just make a spot in the back where it's wide enough and long enough for you to sleep. Throw down a foam mattress, a blanket, a pillow, and you're good to go. Pros, what's good about sleeping inside your vehicle? You don't have to buy anything extra, like a tent. You don't have to make that effort to set up and take down a tent. And vehicle isn't gonna blow down in a storm like a tent. And if it does, you've got big problems. The wind is howling, the rain is beating down, and you're snug as a bug inside a solid structure. Another convenient thing is you can pretty much sleep anywhere. Just pull over to the side of the road and climbing back, go to sleep. Okay, cons. If your sleep spot is where you normally haul gear, you're gonna have to move some stuff around, either put it outside or in the front seat. Many mid-sized SUVs are not long enough for a tall person such as myself to lay flat inside. It's more like the fetal position. And many SUVs, the cargo area has a step up to the folded down rear seats. So you'll need to make out of plywood or whatever, a flat surface to sleep on. A pull behind trailer, like a teardrop, or a utility trailer with a rooftop tent. This can be a really handy option for some of you. With a teardrop trailer, the bed's already made. Just open the back hatch and the kitchen is all set to go. Probably best of all, it'll definitely be stormproof. A utility type trailer with a, a rack and a rooftop tent mounted on top would be great if you were planning on base camping. That way you can drive off do a trail, go to town without having to tear down your camp. And you can haul extra gear in the trailer, leaving room for your family in the vehicle. Or dogs. A big downside, however, especially with teardrop trailers, is the high cost. It's a major investment. They can get upwards of $15,000, $20,000 or more. Another drawback of a trailer is simply having to pull it around. Gas mileage will suffer and there's gonna be more wear and tear on your vehicle. And it's going to limit where you can go. Many remote paths or trails are just not meant for pulling a trailer down. Okay, I'm guessing this one will have a very limited appeal, a hammock. These have almost a cult following. The pros, you're up off the ground, they can be really light and compact small, and some people say that they're very comfortable to sleep in. We have one, a really nice one, but we never use it, at least to sleep in. The problems we see with hammocks are, first, you have to have two places at a certain distance apart to hang it from. With a very simple, lightweight hammock, you're right out in the open for all the weather and the bugs. 
To be comfortable, you'll need to have a tarp over you and some sort of bug netting. So now with the hammock and the tarp and the bug netting, you're at about the same packed size and weight as a ground tent. And to sleep in it for a solid eight hours, we found was just too uncomfortable. Our advice for starting out. Before you go out and lay down a bunch of money on a rooftop tent or a trailer, go out and get yourself a $200 to $400 ground tent. The investment is relatively low, but you'll still get a decent quality tent for that money. Then go camping. Do a lot of camping with that tent. After getting some experience, you'll do a much better job at deciding exactly what shelter suits your needs the best. We hope this video helped you. If it did, hit the like button. And we hope you'll consider subscribing. Thanks, Thanks for, for watching. watching.